Hi, this is Carol, and we're going to do a few more Punnett squares. This is another sex-linked problem. Tom was a hemophiliac, so hemophilia is sex-linked, and his partner was not and was homozygous dominant. What are the chances that this couple will have a boy that does not have hemophilia? So what we want to start again is seeing what the genotypes are. So let's give it a letter and for hemophiliac we'll do H. So mom, if she is big H, big H, she's normal, long carrier. If she's big H, little H, then she's a carrier for the disease, but she's still normal. And if she's little H, little H, she would have the disease. This is mom. For dad, it's carried only on the X chromosome. So he could either have a big H inherited, which gives him, um, which would make him normal, or a little one and he would be diseased. Okay, so let's do our Punnett square again, and we would want to add the X and the Y this time because we want to know, we want to remember that it's carried on the X chromosome. So XX and on this side we're going to do XY and this is sort of getting in the way there so let me get an eraser here. I'm going to erase this just so that we can see what's what. And um, let's see. If he was hemophiliac, we're going to give him a little H there on that X. And his partner was not and was homozygous dominant. So mom here is homozygous, same dominant. So she is normal. She's got two big H's there. And he has the little H. What are the chances that the couple will have a boy that does not have hemophilia? So let's just do the boys. The boys would be down here, x, y, and down here would be x, y. And this boy here would inherit a big H on his x. And this boy here, this other possibility, would inherit a big H, which would make both the boys normal. So the question is, what are the chances that the couple will have a boy that does not have hemophilia, and that is 100%. There is no chance that the boy would have hemophilia if his mother is homozygous dominant. Okay? Okay, the last thing I want to show you with these crosses is a dihybrid cross. This gets more complicated when you want to look at more than one trait. So here, this is two traits and one of them is freckles and one of them is tongue rolling. So do you, you want to know if the offspring is going to have both of those at the same time, freckles and tongue rolling. So here we have a person is homozygous dominant for freckles, homozygous dominant for freckles. So I'm going to make big F, big F for freckles and heterozygous for tongue rolling. So let's do T for tongue rolling and it's heterozygous. So we're going to do big T and little t because they're heterozygous. Here's a child with a person who is heterozygous for freckles. So if they're heterozygous for freckles, it's big F, little f. And who cannot roll their tongue? And that's recessive. So if they cannot roll their tongue, then it's going to be little t, little t. And this is the cross that we're doing. So now what happens is that the square is going to be much, much bigger. It's going to have four boxes like this, and it's going to have four out this way. And it's hard for me to write on all of these, but the most, the hardest thing is how to set this problem up. So notice here, what do you put up at the top here and what do you put here when you're doing a dihybrid cross? Well, mom here can pass on one or the other in combination with one or the other. So what I usually do is I, co I combine, you know, this one with that and this one with this. That's one possibility or this with that or big F with a little t. And that's what's going to go up at the top. So I would have big F, big T, 
or big F, little t, or we go back up here, it would be again big F, big T, and big F, little t. Those are all the possibilities. And it turns out when you look at it, this repeats here. So this and this is really the same as that. Um, so we don't need both of these columns because it's going to be a repetition of these two. But it's not always. Here, um, I'm going to have this is going to be passed on with this or in combination with this. The little f with the little t or the little f with the little t. So here, that's what's going to be up at the top. So we're going to have big F, little t, or big F, little t, which is the same. I'm going to put it down here. Or little f, little t, little f, little t, or little f, little t. So because these two are a repeat of the first two, I'm going to do away with that one also. And the only combinations from this mating is when we fill it out, then this is going to have four things inside. See if I can fit it in. Big F, big F, big T, little t. And that's how you fill in all the rest here. So when these individuals are heterozygous for both, big F, little f, big T, little t, big F, little f, big T, little t, then it's going to fill the whole square here. And you're going to have many different combinations of offspring that have the freckles and can roll their tongue or freckles and can't roll their tongue and all the different combinations of that. So we're, I'm going to stop it there.